So I worked with Drs. Marissa Bird and Paul Wenka, along with the rest of the HSPN Fellows Caucus, on the question of how to measure health equity. So our objective by answering this question was to identify and describe how health inequities can be quantified into a single measure for the purpose of evaluating health system performance. So we tackled this objective by conducting a literature search, which we structured around the definition of health inequity. So health inequities are differences in health that are linked to social, economic, or environmental disadvantage or under-resourcing. When we look at this definition, um, it reveals that there are three necessary components needed uh, to measure health inequity. So the first component is the equity stratifier. And these are used to identify different subgroups in the population according to economic, social, or environmental factors. So some examples would be race, ethnicity, sex, or income. The source of data for an equity stratifier would typically be a census or a survey. And the equity stratifier is really what differentiates health equity measurement from measures of average health. It's also important um, to consider that when you're selecting an equity stratifier, the source and quality and availability of your data. And this is because certain populations may not be represented on certain censuses and surveys. Um, and so you may not actually be capturing what you intend to capture. So the second component is the health system performance indicator. And these should have directionality, should be comparable, and are used to monitor health system performance. The last component is the statistical approach. Um, and these are what are used to quantify the relationship between an equity stratifier and a health system performance indicator. So these are what you were asked about on the poll. Um, and through the review, we identified uh, several approaches in the literature, and we really concentrated on those which were either the most commonly used or the most relevant uh, for measuring health system performance. And the approaches we identified were the rate range, the rate ratio, the slope index of inequality, the absolute gradient index, the relative index of inequality, the concentration index of inequality, and the index of disparity. So these measures can be broken down in two ways. The first is based on their complexity. So we have simple measures, such as the rate range and rate ratio, and then we have our complex measures. Simple measures are most appropriate when the aim is to improve the health of a specific group relative to another, or to serve the starting point for more complex measures. The downside, however, of simple measures is that they can overlook important differences in the population that are present in the intermediate groups. Complex measures, on the other hand, are able to capture inequalities across the entire population, but they do tend to be more difficult to interpret and also are more computationally intensive. We also can look at uh, the complex measures in terms of absolute and relative measures. So the absolute measures provide more context than relative measures. So for example, if you uh, your HSPI, so your indicator, is rate-based, then they would actually give you the disparity in rate across the population according to the equity stratifier. The problem with them, however, is they are not comparable across different indicators. Relative measures, on the other hand, are dimensionless, so they are comparable across different indicators, but they could lead to an overestimation of the magnitude of health inequalities, especially for indicators that have a low event rate. Um, and they also don't give as much information in general as the absolute measures. Typically, it's recommended that both are reported in order to provide a complete picture of the health inequity problems. So the key takeaway is really that there are several approaches you can take in order to measure health inequities, but for all of them, you will need an equity stratifier, a health system performance indicator, and a statistical approach. Your selection of each component needs to be thoroughly considered because it does affect the results and the interpretation of the measure. And your best approach really depends on your aim and what is most important to your aim.